Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to move a WordPress website using a free plugin, Duplicator. This allows you to move a website from one host to another, or in this case, move a new site from a demo server to the live site. Duplicator is highly reliable and my favourite plugin for moving websites. I'm going to cover how to install the plugin, make a backup of the new site, how to create a database with the wizard, use cPanel and file manager to upload the backup files, run the installer on the live domain, then go through troubleshooting if you run into any hosting problems. I highly recommend using Crystal Lightspeed hosting as their servers are really fast and their tech support is excellent if you ever need it. Links and time codes are in the description below. All right, let's get into it. Here's our old site, retreat.co.uk, and here's our new site. So this one is the brand new one that we want to upload to replace this one. It's quite straightforward. What I'm going to do is back up this site first using Duplicator, delete this site, and then upload a new version and run the installer. It literally is that straightforward. So to do that, the first step is gonna to be to back up the new site. So I go into here, and then I log into my WordPress admin, and it's usually forward slash wp-admin. Log into the back end of WordPress. What we wanna do now is go to plugins, add new, and in the search bar up here, type in duplicator. And we're looking for the one by Snap Creek because this is a really good one. Press install now. Once it's installed, activate it. There we go, duplicator is installed. So now on the left hand side, we can see we've got duplicator. So what we want to do is go to packages, create new. You can call it whatever you want, but it puts today's date in and press next. And it take a moment to scan the site and work a few things out. Once the scan's completed, most of these look good. If yours has a warning notice, don't worry too much about it. I'll expand that now. It's just telling me that some of the files are a bit big, like an image or a file. Don't worry too much about that. Most of the time it works perfectly. So I'm happy that all of these are green. All you need to do is tick uh, notice states have been detected, continue with the build process, press build. And what it's going to do now, it's going to back up your database and it's going to zip all the WordPress files that you need. And it may take some time, so don't worry. All right then, so here's our installer file and here's our archive. I'm going to download them one at a time, so click on the installer. That's basically your configuration file that tells you how to install it and then there's the archive with all the uh, WordPress files in it. Click on that, take it a moment to download. Okay, so our download's complete. If you need to follow a guide, it does have one here and it does link to the developer's website. What we can do now, we're done with this particular section. So I just go log out, close the tab. I'm just gonna hide those for the moment. So next thing we need to do is go and log into the old site and remove this site. To do that, put in your domain name, forward slash cPanel, and you should see a screen looks like this. Fill in your details and log in. All right, so we're now in cPanel. This is the latest 2023 one. If you need to find any of the tools, they're up here where it says search tools. If you did want to back up your old site just to be on the safe side, all I'm going to do in the search is type backup. Go to backup wizard and here you can do a full backup of the home directory and databases just in case you want to keep this for archiving if you don't want to back it up and you know you're going to get rid of it all completely go back to your cpanel then we want to go to file manager it's either here or you can find it in the search bar by typing file manager next we're going to delete the old site by going into public html double click this and we see there, there's our WordPress admin file. So this is for the old website. So I'm gonna click, hold down shift, select all of those, leave CGI bin, uh, cause that's just part of the server. I'm gonna press delete and that's gonna delete all the WordPress files, skip the trash and permanently delete the files, press confirm. Uh, this may take a moment. So we should now see if I open our old site, there shouldn't be anything there. So we've got an error 404. So that's the old site. It's deleted. Go back to our cPanel. Next, I'm gonna to go to the databases. So we see there we've got MySQL databases. Click on that. We need to delete the old database because I don't want anything getting mixed up. So we can see here, that's our old one. 
all I'm going to do is click delete the users, revoke user privilege, press go back. So that's remove the user from the database. Now I'm going to delete the database, press delete, delete database permanently, go back, scroll down to the bottom and make sure you've deleted the user as well. All right, go back. So now we don't have a database and we don't have a database user. Now the best thing to do here, you can either fill this in manually, but my preferred way is go back to your cPanel. Skip that. In the search, go to database. We're going to create a new database with a database wizard. What I recommend you do is while you're doing this, bring up a notepad on here to write in your details because we're going to create a database name, a user and a password. So I put that in notepad because we're going to need that later on. So type in the name of your database, press next step. And we see there it's created a database name that I'm just going to copy that name there in between the quotation marks, paste that into my notepad. And then we're going to generate a password. I'm going to use a password generator for this. So I go password generator. I like to go with advanced options, set it to the maximum number 18, because that's a bit stronger. Generate password. Tick, I have copied this password to a safe place, so copy it, add it to your notepad document, and press use password. Okay, so that's our user setup and a password. All we've got to do now is press create user. If this pop-up appears, just click the X. So it'll tell us here's our username, here's our database. You want to tick all privileges, make changes. All right, so that's our database set up, ready to go. Go back to cPanel and now we need to go to file manager. So we can either click on the icon here or use a search for file manager. Go to our public underscore HTML folder. And now we want to press upload. Next, open your downloads folder. So it should have your installer file in and your website files. So click these, drag them and drop them. So you'll see the installer uploads really quickly because it's a tiny file and our website is about 200 meg. So I'll speed the section up so you don't have to wait. All right, so that's our file uploaded. Sometimes you may get this error, but usually it works. So I'm just going to close this upload window. And then in our file manager, I'm just going to refresh it. We should see there's our installer and there's our file. All right, so to run the installer, open a tab and open your live website URL. We should see our error code, which is OK. Now what you want to do is type in forward slash installer dot PHP. Press enter. And this is where we're going to need our database files. So we're just going to fill in our details. So I've got my database name, database user, database password. So I'm just going to copy and paste those in. So copy our database name, paste that in, and do the same with the user and the password. Once you've copied that in, scroll down to the bottom and you just want to press validate. As we can see, it's all going green. If there's any errors, it'll tell you and it'll be in red. If you've got any in red here, like PHP config, and you don't know how to do that, I'll cover that in the troubleshooting. Tick, I've read the terms and conditions. Press next. Okay, all this looks good to me because I filled in the details. So it's going to show you which URL it's going to install it to and the path, which is correct, which is public HTML. So press OK. I have known it a few times to stick on about 59% for quite a while, so that's normal if it does do that. But as you can see, it's, uh, it's extracting it, no problems. So the installer is now installed in the database, which is usually very quick. Now it's adding the database files to the database tables. All right, so everything's good. It did show us a few errors during the install, but it seems to have worked it out. So, all right, so your site should now be good to go. So it's got auto delete installer files after login recommended. I would leave that ticked because we don't want to keep them on the server because it's just wasting space. Now I'm going to go to admin login and test my site. All right, there we go. So there's our back end. I'm going to copy the site URL, open it in a new tab, and then just check everything's working. 
All right, so our home page is loading. The main thing is check the other pages on your site load. So click on one of them, just make sure it is loading okay and you're not getting any errors. So I'm quite happy that all this is working and our site's moved across okay. So I'm gonna log into the site and we see there it says this site's been successfully migrated and it's removed all of the extra files that we don't need. And also with mine, I use iTheme security. So it's told me that was deactivated during the installation. So all I need to do is go into my plugins and reactivate it. If you found this helpful, please consider a like and subscribe, leave a comment below. One thing I would recommend doing is going back into your demo site and remove the site. So you could do that. I use Soft Oculus. So I type in Soft for Soft Oculus, go to WordPress Manager. Here's the new site on the demo server. What I would do is click on the little arrow to do that and press remove. And I'd remove the directory, the database and the database user. So that's going to be completely removed from my demo server. Scroll to the bottom, press remove installation, press OK. And that's just going to prevent other people working on the demo site and they're not going to be working on the real one that's in use at the moment. Turn to WordPress management and then just log out. And that's just a bit of housekeeping for you. All right, so we're going to have a quick look at troubleshooting various issues. A lot of the issues are generally uh, hosting restrictions. So if I go to PHP in the search, go to select PHP version, most of the issues with uploads can be solved by going into here, by going into options. So in this window, we can do things like increase the memory limit if your host allows it. And we can also tell it to do upload maximum file size. So again, if you're hitting any restrictions on this, you could try this first. So you could try increasing it uh, to the maximum if you need to. If you're not seeing the options like I do here, it might be worth contacting your hosting provider and see if they can increase the upload number. So yeah, turning these up in most cases will fix a lot of the upload issues. I'm also using PHP 8.2 on mine, and I just need to make sure that when I upload the site to a new server that I make sure that ND my SQLI is ticked, and that's fixed quite a few of the problems for me as well. Most issues can be fixed by increasing the PHP upload limit. If these steps didn't fix your issue, please contact the hosting provider and open a support ticket. Leave me a message in the comments and I'll try to help. Well, that's it for me, guys. Please hit that like button and smash that subscribe. Well, if you didn't like it, hit that dislike twice and thanks for watching.